Well, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Excavation Point Zoo. My name is Sweet Bear and today I am joined by Mrs. T-Rex. Hi Gemma, how are you? I'm good, thank you, how are you? Delightful, thank you. So today, guys, we are building a lemur enclosure. Now I've chucked all the lemurs in there, so we've got three different types of lemurs now, correct me if I'm wrong, Gemma. And there's a new one, like a black and white roughed or whatever that was yeah. um anyway so i was like i don't just want one i want them all so i put them all in uh and obviously we have like the breeding and so on switched off um but i decided to build this habitat as a walkthrough habitat sort of mirrored off the zoo in my home city which is melbourne in victoria australia and you can walk through the lima habitat i'll pop some pictures into the speed build here for you guys to see but Basically what it is, is it does have like these bamboo sort of, I guess, structures as you walk towards the airlock. So they obviously have an airlock. They allow a certain amount of people into the airlock. You stand in the airlock, they close the other door and then they let you through into the habitat because the lemurs are obviously really intelligent and smart. And they're like, well, we'll be exiting as soon as you open that door. Um, so they want to make sure that they can keep the lemurs in there. Uh, so that's what I'm building now. I'm just building a little sort of makeshift airlock with around the, uh, I guess that wooden structure that I popped in there. And then inside I eventually put quite a lot of plants and trees and a whole bunch of stuff in there to make it look a bit more lush. I also put some bamboo over around the outside of the fence so that you can't kind of look into the habitat from the outside. You do actually have to walk through it because that's part of the experience, I guess. Do you have any like walk through habitats where you live, Gemma? Um, so Edinburgh Zoo's got, uh, I wanna say it's kangaroo but it's not it's a wallaby walkthrough oh, yeah. which is pretty cool Cute. um I, I, we have been to a lemur walkthrough i think it's blue drum and safari park which is the jankiest like zoo in scotland <laughs> i'm not throwing shade on it but honestly if anyone's been to that park it's it's a bit jank but, yeah <laughs> oh no oh golly yeah. well today in melbourne it is a beautiful day. I know you don't have the nicest day in Scotland, so I'm probably going to make you a bit jealous. But it's really sunny. It's really um, warm. I've got all the doors and windows open. Um, <laughs> it's just a it's just a perfect day in Melbourne, to be honest. Um, but I don't really like the heat. So when it gets to kind of between January and February, it gets super hot here. And um, that's when I would gladly trade for your snow, I think, when we're in the 40 degrees. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, you're, I'm glad that I'm your friend because like that's making me so jealous. <laughs> it's horrible weather here. We just had a storm. Um, I don't know if you guys have storms and they na name them, mm -hmm. but we had a storm on oh my days. I can't remember what it was called. It's like Storm Ar Arwin or something. Oh. Um, which I, I don't feel like it's an appropriate name for a storm. I feel like storm should be called after like really angry, disgruntled women like storm helga or <laughs> storm karen? i don't know storm karen um, that's probably a bit me marjorie <laughs> storm karen <laughs> no that's that's absolutely perfect storm but no karen. they i i feel like they've went for a really nice um nice name for it but it was miserable and this morning when i woke up yeah. we went out to the back garden to make sure i've got like this little greenhouse it's pathetic but it's, it's cute at the same time mm -hmm. and um, my mum texts me and she's like is your little greenhouse still there and i was like let me go outside and check <gasps> and yes this thing is like super light so i expected it to be you know flung off into someone's back garden yeah and it wasn't it was still there but <laughs> we do have a shed that has um like our bikes in it mm -hmm. and the the lid on it like flew off and then it's like cracked into two two separate pieces so now I need to go buy a new shed oh no oh well i mean yeah. were your bikes all safe in that yeah the bikes are fine That's um, good. everyone's like inside it is okay but yeah and it's strange because i i was sitting here at night time and the storm was like obviously going and I heard like this massive bat and obviously I looked outside the window and it's pitch black and I was mm -hmm. like oh I wonder what that is and I was like that's the culprit yeah right yeah we have m massive storms in Australia too but like um really like thunder and lightning like quite a lot of that stuff going on so we haven't had one of those for a while but no doubt they're coming up we get them in summer quite a lot 
And do you name your storms? Yeah, I mean, they're, I mean, weirdly, I mean, I'm sure someone in the comments will be able to tell us why they're all named after women. I would enjoy knowing the answer to that because I don't understand why storms are all named after women. But yes, most sto most big storms that sort of move around the globe are often named after women. So don't know why. Yeah. I, I, yeah, that's a bit strange. Yeah. Anyway, um, what I'm doing right now, guys, you can see I was trying to be really clever and put like a little bit of water underneath the walkway because in Melbourne we have like a, a little, I guess it's like a little river that goes under the walkway in the lemur habitat. And uh, it didn't work. So I had to, I guess, fix it up so that I could just have a little pool in here because um, the lemurs quite like water I think well actually I don't know that for a fact but there was a lot of fiddling around with this habitat like in order to get them to go from one side to the other you can see me looking at like the heat maps and things now I had to remove quite a few things and they were able to sort of get up onto the rope and then they couldn't run across it and then I had to move like it so they could run across the footpath but they still couldn't get to the other side so I was fiddling around with it for ages I eventually got it to work uh, and then saved it and left um, and went out of the game, came back into the game, and then it wasn't working again. They couldn't climb on anything, so I had to delete all the climbable pieces and put them all back in, which is weird. I haven't had that bug before, but it ended up working out in the end. Um, and I did also roof this habitat with a net because I wanted to try and keep it realistic. It's a really janky looking net, everyone, so we're not going to look at it too closely, but it is there, so, and it's a, that's what would be there in a habitat like this. Otherwise, the lemurs would literally just climb out of a habitat. So in Melbourne, they have like a big net over the top of the lemur habitat, and it just stops them from escaping because they would just trot themselves out and go for a little trot around the zoo, I would say. Um, a lot of the pieces that I used in the habitat are off the workshop, so I'll try and link them below. We haven't done much linking below, to be honest, so I'm sorry to, to all the creators that have created them. I think uh, the fence is by Simply Savannah and the, I guess, the little lemur baskets. I think they're by Rudy Renkamal, so if you know those creators, jump over, have a watch at their channels. Um, but yeah, they're just some of their little things that I popped in here. Um, what else can we chat about, Gemma? What about... Uh, this, uh, so actually, let's talk about, I've got an idea. Let's talk about our little project that you and I are working on at the moment, like personal stuff. So I'm sending you like a little box of things from Australia. Like when I say things, guys, I mean like food, like yep. Australian food. And Gemma's going to send me like a few little things from Scotland or England or Britain or whatever. And we're going to do like quintessentially Australian stuff and quintessentially like Scottish or, Engl or British stuff. And so I'm really looking forward to getting my special food box, but I've sent um, mm -hmm. the Australian food box already to Gemma and I know she has heaps of questions. So we're going to do some in my, some in my video and some in Gemma's video coming out shortly, which is a uh, different animal. Um, but let's talk about the one that I'm most excited for you to try, which is Vegemite. How are you feeling about it? So, me and Mar might go back a while. We have this really <laughs> strange bond with each other. Mm -hmm. And it all started when I was streaming on Twitch. And I had a channel point that you could redeem that I basically I took a spoonful of Marmite. And also cockles, which I really wish I could send them over to you. Actually, have you tried cockles? What is a cockle? Brilliant. <laughs> um, <laughs> That, that's it's like amazing. a little, is it so, like uh, a little shellfish, right? Like a little, yeah, yeah, clam. It's like a little, <laughs> it's a little salty, bogey filled. It's they're disgusting, but basically, yeah, it's, it's a little crust, crustacean. Is that what they're called? Ooh. Um, <laughs> Makes so it sound yeah, worse. we had this channel, uh, this channel redemption th thing on my. Um, my Twitch channel yeah. and my community were like loving it because they love to redeem it and see me either eat cockles or marmite. <gasps> I didn't understand like marmite you're supposed to put on toast. I think that's quite what a lot of people have it for breakfast. But I was just literally getting like a teaspoon and just like scooping up like a massive dollop and then just oh straight, straight in. It's, it's a... Uh, very beefy is my experience from Marmite. Oh, yuck. Beefy. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, 
Well, I've had both Marmite and Vegemite, and in my opinion, and you might have a different opinion when you try the Vegemite, and we do have some rules around how you eat Vegemite in Australia, which a lot of people from different countries other than Australia don't get the rules, which is why they end up hating Vegemite from first try. Um, But in my opinion, my Australian opinion, Marmite is nothing like Vegemite, um, and most people that I know prefer Marmite to Vegemite. So if you don't like Marmite, uh, then you're probably going to hate Vegemite. Um, basically, yep. it is just a little package of salt, um, like a really, really salty substance. I think it's just yeast extract, which is um, it doesn't sound all that appealing either, does it really? But it is really good. I'm really trying to turn people on to Vegemite. It's so good. It's so Australian. Uh, but people do it wrong all the time. So they do exactly what you did with Marmite. They get their teaspoon full of Vegemite and they go, right, I'm going to put this on my bread. And they slather it on like a really big, like thick amount of Vegemite. Ugh, it makes me feel sick. And then they eat it and then they go, ooh, how can people like this? How does everyone in Australia love it? And then we're all looking at it going, no, that's not how you eat it. Don't eat it like that. (laughs) It's amazing. It's so good, but you did it wrong. Mistakes were made. So basically what you need to do with Vegemite, for everyone out there that has not tried Vegemite or is going to try it in the future, Gemma, listen carefully, what you need to do is you need to have some bread nice white bread it doesn't matter what kind of white bread but it has to be white i guess it can be wholemeal but white is like the first way to try it and then so kind of like the crappiest bread you can buy basically and then what you need to do is toast it so it's nice and lightly toasted with a bit of a you know a bit of a brown crust on it then you need to put a lot of butter on like we're talking like more butter than what you would put on a jam toast or you know a I guess a uh, crumpet or anything like that, like a a decent amount of butter and let it melt in, then you get a tiny bit of Vegemite and you dab it on. You dab it and give it a little spread in the little dabbed places. And I'm going to put it, I'm actually going to put a picture into this video of what the toast with the finished amount of Vegemite on should look like. And then everyone will be educated and I will be surprised if people don't love it. I'm going to, I'm going to be quite surprised if you don't enjoy it. I feel like you will enjoy it, but, uh, It'll definitely be a journey. I can't wait to see you try it. I've actually got it right in my hands right now. It's veggie bite, B vitamins for vitality. <laughs> Squeezy, proudly Australian made and owned. Oh my gosh, there if, we go. if you look at the back, does it say yeast extract? <laughs> it does. It also says it's made, made in Australia from at least 95% Australian ingredients. Oh, you would hope so. 95? Yeah, surely it should be 100%. Yeah, I'm wondering what's in it that's, that they might have had to pour in. <laughs> who knows? And who knows where it would have come from too. Oh dear. But anyway, so it used to have like the yeast extract bit on the front, um, but I think they took it off and changed it to B vitamins because yeast extract was quite off-putting for some people. Yeah, I mean, the first ingredients on the back is yeast extract from yeast grown on barley and wheat. Yeah. Yeah. So I think yum, they, yum. yum yum. So I think they use the the um, barley and wheat to make beer, and the byproduct of some of that beer. This sounds so Australian now. The byproduct of the beer <laughs> is the is the extract, and then they use that to make Vegemite. Oh my god. Oh dear. It's quite it's quite resourceful if you think about it. Yeah. I mean, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, the this is one that. I honestly laughed when I, I opened up the box and, and because we were speaking about um, Marmite and yeah, it's it's really cute as well. It's like 200 grams and it's in a little squeezy bottle, but I've not took the seal off yet. So Oh, take the seal off yeah. and have a whiff. Okay, I'll do it. Yes, do it. I feel like and, you're going to be like, <laughs> well, you see, I've got Marmite downstairs from the good old Twitch days. Which I should probably start putting them back on. Oh, wow. This is really... Oh, no, I think this is going to smell the same as Marmite. Is it? Right, the seal... Oh, here off. we go. Oh, I can't swear on your stream. <laughs> That's very potent. It is. It smells nothing like Marmite, right? Marmite definitely smells more beefy, but... No, yeah. this, this just smells like... 
I don't know. Like, you could probably, I don't know, clean your bathroom with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pretty unique smell, isn't it? Well, it'll be good to see you taste it shortly or soon. Well, yeah, I'm definitely going to follow your guide by putting little dabs on my toast little rather dabs. than just yes. a big, thick teaspoon. Oh, this is taking me back because I remember getting it stuck on my desk, the Marmite all over my desk. Oh, and no. I've just went away and put the, the lid upside down. So now I have veggie mite on my desk. <laughs> right. Don't lick it off because it, it, will, it will ruin your <laughs> taste buds for future tastings. Yeah, it's true. You can't. It's you all just, coming back to me. You just can't have it. I know. On how, how do you store this? This is my next question. I wonder if it tells you on the back. You just store it in a cool, dry place. Yeah, just chuck it in your cupboard. Yeah. Chuck it in your cupboard. It'll last forever. Oh, great. <laughs> well, it actually does last forever. September 2022. Yep. Oh. You never. You never know. I might, I might absolutely love veggie mite and I might have to get you to send me more over but I very much doubt it I doubt it too but we're going to give it a crack we'll give it a go and do you know what if you do like it that one there that I've sent you will last quite a while because you only do need a wee bit you only do need just a little wee bit so that'll last you quite yeah. some time and and uh, I don't know your family members might enjoy it <laughs> well Byron who's my husband he was a um, he he picked it up and he went to sniff it, but obviously the seal was still on. So yeah. I think he's quite intrigued by what it, it smells like. Excellent. Well, I'd be interested to see what he thinks. Have to wait and see. Yeah, I was um, in the shop trying to get all your stuff as well. Yeah. And there's something that's in my box. I'm just having a look at it right now because it is still next to me. Um, cherry ripe. Oh yeah, yeah, we yeah. We actually yeah. have these. these oh, do you? I just found these in the shop. There's like many, many versions of these. And the barcode thing said that it was imported in from Australia, but I've never actually seen them until I got your box over and I was like, what are these? Yeah, right. Yeah, also you were saying you were really surprised by the size of the crunchy. Oh yeah, the crunchy's massive. See, things like that, that is not massive in Australia. That's like just, that's like a, that's a snack. That's a snack bar, no, and you just buy that as like that is a, not a snack bar. It is definitely a snack, like that's a snack bar. And then we have like king size, and then that's big. <laughs> so that's just no. like, a, that's a normal size chocolate bar. And same with the cherry ripe, normal size chocolate bar. That's like something that someone would buy and eat in one sitting as like one person. They'd be like, right, I'm gonna eat this now because I just fancied it, but like a crunchy bar. And they're That's all, insane. I know. And you know when you go to the shops and like the chocolates that you, you know, they're trying to convince kids to buy will all be like by the count, like by the service checkout so that like as kids yeah. walk past, they're like, mum, get me one of these or whatever, or adults see them and just grab one. That's where those sized crunchy bars are because they're just like in, in Australia, they're just normal size. So it's so funny when you opened it and you were like, whoa, this is huge. And I was like, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I mean, I know for a fact, like, our chocolate bars are getting smaller and they even owned up that to that because of the, like, sugar, whatever it is, mm -hmm. sugar-wise, like, sugar tax or whatever that they've got going on in Britain. But, yeah, I, it's, it's like, insanely massive. I kind of want to send you out just, like, a standard crunchy size so you can be like, is, is this for real? Because they are actually, I would say probably, like, half the size of this. Oh, my gosh, do it. Definitely do it. Okay guys, we're coming up to the end of the speed build. We're going to jump into the real time part and we will continue our crunchy conversation over there. Catch you then. Well, hey everyone, welcome back from the speed build. I am in the real time part by myself. Unfortunately, I did record the real time part with Mrs. T-Rex and the audio for some reason did not work so I've had to fiddle around with a couple of settings on my computer and sort that out. Strange that it didn't work because we had been recording together just prior to that and it was all fine so anyway never mind we um, will just have a quick look at this uh, Lima habitat together on our own and then uh, Mrs T-Rex will be releasing her episode over on her channel in the next few days so we're going to head into you can see this structure just here it's like a wooden structure the one in Melbourne 
is as you would have seen in the pictures in the speed build um, like made out of bamboo and it's kind of like a oval shape so we're going to head through the I guess that's called an airlock um, just excuse the interior I have not decorated it at all because really you're not going to see in there uh, so we'll just go through and we're in here and they we stop in here they close the door behind us then they tell us we can go through here and we are in the lemur habitat now you'll have to excuse the lemurs if they are on the roof of the habitat they can get up here by themselves there, there's one up here um, I love it when they run across the rope like that just looks so cool um, but yeah they can get up on the uh, netting unfortunately there is really no way to stop that unless I delete all the trees in the habitat which I don't want to do um, I was talking about well <laughs> hello fellow um, I really don't like that they're up there but oh well life goes on um, I was talking about uh, how it doesn't look particularly realistic to have the trees kind of poking through the nets but in the Melbourne habitat they do they do have quite a lot of trees they obviously had existing trees that they didn't want to cut sort of down to put the habitat in so they put holes in the netting and then put like these little barriers around the holes to stop the lemurs from squeezing through um, which obviously I can't do in game which is why they end up kind of like on top of the net but never mind so we've got these little round sort of information areas and then the lemurs have got their own little space so they've got their own space down here and then they've also got their own space sort of on this Whoa. side as well so they have their um, little beds up in the sort of I guess they're like little nests or something up there to kind of keep little privacy for them and then we have this education point over here so um, sometimes when the keepers come and feed them right here and the uh, educator is talking here it does look quite cool because you've got people watching in this sort of stand and the educator having a chat and then the lemurs are on this food um, I guess they put like like fruit and veggies on here and the lemurs kind of come and grab it out um, and that really looks cool uh, so yeah they've got this sort of education area inside here and the lemurs have got free range of this entire habitat so they can run on the footpath they can also sort of get down into here I've seen them walking all over this thing here um, they do love to be walking on the netting unfortunately but life goes on and then down this way what we'll do is we'll just trot on down there's not too much to show you in in the habitat I guess um, habitat wise uh, we've got another airlock down this end some more education boards and then if we just have a look over here this is like the um, forage thing that I've sunk into the ground so oh, that well I, I had sunk into the ground now we can kind of see a little bit of it there maybe it's because I put the sprinkler right there um, and then they've got like their little fruit spike as well so there are many lemurs in here but at the moment we can't see many because they are all on top of the cage <laughs> unfortunately um, but that's okay so yeah that's the lemur habitat if we head back through this uh, little airlock here we might just speed it up a little bit um, we end up on the other side of the lemur habitat with a similar I guess um, roof on the entrance way so another kind of wooden dome area and then this is kind of like back to the little shop front in Mrs. T-Rex's build from last time uh, and you can see I've kind of started putting in some little extra features like some signs and so on there's one here there's also one here just makes the zoo seem a little bit more realistic a little bit more um, like what it would actually be and then you can see I've also put bamboo all the way around the outside of this habitat so that you kind of you do have to really walk in in order to see the lemurs we might just finish off inside the habitat so there we are everyone thank you so much for joining me on this journey to build a lemur habitat i hope you enjoyed the build and the chat that mrs t-rex and i had about vegemite and crunchy bars if you are enjoying the content please give this video a like comment on it and head on over to mrs t-rex's channel and subscribe if you would like to see more of this project we'll just watch this little lemur run across and then we will say goodbye thank you so much everyone and we will see you in the next one Bye, guys.